Good afternoon, folks, and welcome back to Beijing, China. This is the FIBA Basketball World Cup 2019. It's Group A first round action between Venezuela and Cote d'Ivoire. So China swept up in World Cup euphoria right now, and uh, two days already have been played. Uh, we saw four groups on opening day, including host China uh, winning against Cote d'Ivoire, as well as uh, Venezuela falling to Poland. And today these uh, two teams who already have their backs against the wall are going to square off uh, in the hope of really uh, breathing some life into the World Cup. I'm Jeff Taylor, joined by Josh Davis. And Josh, uh, th there's no doubt about it, the way the current system is, and this is the way it's going to be moving forward, is you know, it is it is costly if you fall in that opening game. No, definitely. And, you know, the good thing is both of these teams will pick up, or one of these teams, I should say, will pick up a victory tonight. A lot to play for. Obviously, there always is at the World Cup. We're just hoping for probably a little bit better performance, especially from Cote d'Ivoire. Venezuela, though, played quite a good game against Poland. Poland, just the better team that night. Uh, so if you're Venezuela, you're thinking you bring that level of intensity. Obviously, the shooting that they had in that first quarter gives himself a little bit of a chance. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, when I left the arena the other night, you know, I, I have to be honest. I mean, I felt like Cote d'Ivoire had played better than they actually had. They had a good first, fairly decent first half, especially defensively. But, you know, to me, looking back at the game tape the next day, I felt like maybe the, the intensity or the lack of effort was uh, something to be desired for them, especially in the defensive end. Yeah, obviously, you know, they allowed 29 points to China in the first half. Any coach will take that going to the locker room. China made some adjustments at halftime, got the ball inside, and Cote d'Ivoire couldn't really stop them. And pretty much every single one of China's baskets came from inside the paint. But you talk about the defense on the offensive end, they only shot 29% from the field. That's never going to cut it. Uh, whether it's inside and out, they just weren't able to put the ball in the basket. Meanwhile, Venezuela, a little bit harder to say why they could be Poland. Um, some of their key guys probably didn't you know, produce the way that they usually would. You know, you look at a Gregory Vargas, only really played 15 minutes, five points. You know, wasn't his typical aggressive self, so you, you expect him to bounce back tonight. But if you're Venezuela, you're feeling quite confident based on your performance from Saturday night that you can get a W here in game two. Well, we are... Just about six minutes and 35 seconds away from the opening tip in these international basketball events. Uh, we have the playing of the national anthems. Of course, this is the action for today, starting with Venezuela, Cote d'Ivoire, followed by China and Poland tonight, the battle of 1-0 teams. And uh, quite frankly, folks, it's just very exciting to be a part of all of this. So we're now going to have uh, a look at the group standings, China and Poland after their wins. Uh, they get the participation point plus the point for the victory, so they're in positions one and two. And Venezuela and Cote d'Ivoire each got a participation point, and they're third and fourth. So vitally important game uh, for both of these teams uh, about to kick off or start. And we're going to pause for the playing of the national anthems. Please remain standing for the national anthem of Venezuela.
It's a great part of the game. It actually comes before the game. And the national anthems uh, just reminding us all that this is about uh, these players, and coaches uh, going out and representing their countries. And of course, uh, hoping to be in the top 23 by the end of this tournament so they stay in contention uh, for a spot in the Olympics. Of course, there'll be seven teams who qualify directly from the World Cup for the Olympics. Two from the Americas, two from Europe. One from Oceania, one from Asia, one from Africa. The referees for today, Matthew Albert Myers, Yana Yomas, and Harza Jalajri from the USA, Turkey, and Indonesia. That's a fine refereeing crew that uh, we've seen in action many times. And we will also get a look at the starting fives. And I got to tell you, folks, I like the new graphics that we've got. So whoever is uh, the mastermind behind this, well done. We're going to see the starting fives, and then the roster is going to peel right off of that. Yeah, it looks really, really good. And obviously, these teams want to make sure they look good on the court. So the starting five for Cote d'Ivoire, Charles Abuo, Suleiman Solo Di Abate, Guy Eddy, the captain, Dion Thompson, the big man, and Mohamed Kone, who, even though 38 years of age, had a phenomenal game uh, for Cote d'Ivoire, one of the few bright spots, I would say, in their game against China. And you can see also those uh, players come off the bench. And we're actually going to highlight Mohamed Kone, who, against China, you know, had nine points and eight rebounds, almost a double-double, also played 22 minutes, and they needed him for every single one of it. Of course, you know, they were down nine with about three minutes to go. They still had a chance to kind of get into the game. China pulling away there towards the end. Meanwhile, for Venezuela, we were kind of surprised by the starting five. You know, Gregory Vargas wasn't included in the opening matchup. And uh, that's going to be the case here again tonight. Hesser Guillent, the point guard, Jose Vargas, the veteran and the captain. Dwight Lewis, who had a pretty good game against Poland. Miguel Ruiz, the big man, had 10 rebounds. And of course, the go-to guy for this Venezuelan squad, Nestor Colmenares. And then you see there the bench for head coach Fan, uh, Fernando Duro. And of course, Jose Vargas, the brother of uh, Greg Vargas. Exactly. So we want to highlight Nestor Comunales. Had 14 points and seven rebounds. Also led the team in minutes. Need him to be a little bit more aggressive, though, Jeff. He only took 10 shots, made six of them. So obviously pretty efficient from the field. They're going to need him to put a lot of points up on the board, not just tonight, but throughout the rest of the tournament, if they want to indeed get one of those spots for the Olympics. And there's uh, Duro. You mentioned Fernando Duro hails from Argentina. And I like, uh, I think he does a great job with his team. He coached him in the qualifiers, as did uh, this man for Cote d'Ivoire, the Italian Paolo Povia. Yeah, Povia mentioning after the game that they had a game plan. They didn't quite execute it in terms of the intensity. Uh, he didn't want to single anyone out, but you could tell that he expected more from his team, and we'll see if they were able to get that message and here have a chance 48 hours later to redeem themselves just a little bit. Cote d'Ivoire fans uh, still in the uh, lower bowl. Not quite as good a seat as opening night against China. But nevertheless, uh, they will be making a lot of noise. And you know, don't forget Venezuela. Uh, they do have a rich tradition of basketball and have had a lot of success in recent times. Uh, they made it to the Olympics in 2016. They got that famous semifinal win over Canada at the FIBA America 2015. And Cote d'Ivoire, as we were talking about beforehand, they've come up with some pretty good results uh, themselves. Uh, but. 
you might remember uh, against Venezuela, or rather when they played uh, Puerto Rico, Cote d'Ivoire, they did China a favor at the 2010 World Cup, uh, beating Puerto Rico. So they have come out and they've beaten teams from the Americas before. Yeah, and likewise Venezuela, they're 4-0 against African teams in the history of the World Cup, so another reason for them to feel confident. and good afternoon. Welcome to Beijing. We're going to throw it up again here, the uh, opening tip of this game, or the tip. Venezuela in the white, and Cote d'Ivoire in the orange and the green. Venezuela in the white and the uh, garnet. Is that what that is? Well, I'm just thinking it's garnet. Miles could be playing tricks on me. And it's uh, Venezuela that win the opening tip. So Hesler Guillen. And Coleman Aris, you mentioned it. I mean, he was absolutely almost unstoppable against Poland early. And really in the second half kind of disappeared a little bit. Ruiz turns it over. Here comes Charles Abua. He had good and bad moments as well. I mean, you have to say that's about all of these players on opening night. They, they showed us some good and they showed us some bad. Yeah, the shooting struggles were on display for Abu. It was a nice pass to Thompson. Couldn't quite handle it. Well, almost a terrific catch and save by Abu. That was a very difficult play. And Povia looks uh, a little bit downcast already. Well, two turnovers on the first two possessions. These teams need to rouse themselves. Hugely important game. White Lewis drives in, misses. And here is Mo Kone, the veteran, 38 years old, and you know, tremendous. Here's Guy Eddy fouled while taking the shot, so he has a couple free throws. And I'd like to know what you think about, you know, it's great that Kone, at 38 years of age, is playing at the level that he is. Quite an example for all of us, yourself included, uh, that he could play at the World Cup. Here's Gietti. But what does it say about your national team program that you, you're relying so heavily on Mo Kone at 38 years of age? Yeah, obviously you'd want to get a little bit more youth in that program. And sometimes it's great to have a veteran presence to kind of show the way, lead the way, you know, be that vocal presence in the locker room perhaps. but. Not necessarily to be leading or close to leading the team in scoring yeah. and rebounding and potentially even minutes. Um, so Cote d'Ivoire still has a little bit of a way to go. Uh, but the other thing to consider was, you know, our big man, Frigis Zerbo, got in foul trouble, uh, was only able to play, I think it was about nine or ten minutes yeah. and four fouls. And cool. in those nine minutes, he was actually very effective. So the big seven-footer, uh, two meters 13, we'll see if he's able to make an impact for a longer time when he's on the floor. Well, Guilletti made one of two. The second one barely grazed the rim. Talk about impressive characters. He's a, the captain of Cote d'Ivoire, spoke before the uh, tournament. Very uh, articulate, very interesting listening to him. Nice drive inside, and already this Senor Cominares gets on the board. And you can see Duro making a, a point to get the ball to Cominares on the block, where despite only being 6'8", he's so effective, very strong. Well, Deion Thompson's going to put up a jumper. And it's going to be rebounded by Ruiz. Now Jose Vargas. Hesler Guillen goes baseline. Gets it back outside to Ruiz. Jose Vargas for three. It's good. And you knew that was going down. Great ball movement, penetration, and kick. Ruiz making the extra pass for Vargas for the three. You can see how this Venezuela team thrives uh, on the emotion factor with the beating of the chest. But Guilletti comes out and smokes another three-pointer. He's been pretty good from deep. Yeah, when he takes it, he knocked down those two back-to-back -back threes against China in that second half. Quicker start here for Eddie. And nice jumper. The response. So the offense starting to pick up now for both sides. And the one thing I'm 
also keeping an eye on Dwight Lewis turn his ankle against Poland. Seems to be moving pretty well here. Closing out on Gietti. Lewis was uh, probably the other player who played quite well for Venezuela in that first game. So Colmenares grabs the rebound and pushes. Rebound and go. Rebound and run, but his pass uh, over the head of Jose Vargas. And that's why you hear coaches say, I'll let to a point guard. Let him bring the ball up. You think? Again, I mean, I'm pretty sure Chinese fans don't want to hear me say this, but I, I really believed after that first day that this Venezuela team, you see the Guillant jumper, uh, was the second best team in this group. And I'm really curious to see if they can come out and execute, but Abuo hits the jumper. You know, Cote d'Ivoire are a team that's full of surprises. You know, who would have thought they would have made it to this World Cup? Yeah, they finished third in, uh, well, the best third team in the African qualifiers. And had it. that was a tough set of obstacles they had to overcome to get to that spot. But had congratulations to, Nigeria, to them. And that last, uh, they won their last three games. And look, the pass inside and nobody picks up Ruiz. And, and that's what concerns me about Coach Dubois' defense in the lane, in, in the paint. Yeah, no real rim protector. Deion Thompson. More of a, not a stretch for necessarily, but not necessarily, also not the kind of big who protects the basket. He does attack the basket here, though, and he travels. Wow. Thompson had a frustrating night, just 3 of 12 from the field against China. Well, he's, uh, he's had a very, I would suggest, yeah, he did kind of shuffle his feet. He's had a very good career so far in Europe, but you know, playing international basketball is a little bit different. And now the rebound and the run by Gietti. Gietti goes in and that almost looked like a pass. Yeah, he left his feet a little bit indecisive there in midair. Just chucked it off the backboard. And there's Pedro Churio, Churio leading scorer for Venezuela in their opening game against Poland, 15 points. Sure we'll see him soon. There's again, slides to his left, puts it up, goes! Well, we know he's got the range. He hit one from a lot farther out in the opener. Again, Eddie is uh, met at midcourt, alley -oop. no, pass to Abuo. Gets in and scores with the left hand. Interesting, Colmenares didn't even challenge him there. Yeah, a bit of a pickup field defensively here so far. We'll see if the intensity picks up a little bit as the game goes on. 12 to 9 here in the early going. Dump down low, and again, Cote d'Ivoire giving away a layup. And it's what we saw against China. That interior defense uh, just seems almost non existent at times. Meanwhile, Venezuela, we saw them trap a lot against Poland, try to apply pressure. Thompson, like a bull in a China shot, gets inside and lays it up and in. And there's Sidibe Amadou uh, Melia, who's a part of this uh, Cote d'Ivoire program but didn't make the World Cup squad. He's sitting here watching events. Nice pass. Lewis for three, good! Well, it's almost a carbon copy for Venezuela. They started hot from three-point range against Poland in the first quarter. And they've done the same thing tonight. Yeah, already three three-pointers and then a few layups for Venezuela. So the offense really clicking now these last few minutes. And the turnover. Ruiz, four on one. Vargas hands it off to Guillet. Lays it up and in. And uh, Povea calls a timeout. And I would not be surprised uh, if he's a little bit heated during this timeout. Yeah, I mean, the fact that only one player got back on defense while you saw four white jerseys attacking the basket for the easy conversion by Guillen. Let's go down and listen. You got to call, give us something early so we know where we're running. That's why Mokia get up, we don't know where we're running. Non, non, je sais, quand c'est toi, anticipe pas. Va sur lui, hein? Va sur lui. 
Check out the replays here for I, Venezuela. I don't know about I don't know what what you make of that timeout, but certainly Deion Thompson was uh, feeling a little bit upset. He didn't think that they were running any plays, or he didn't know what they were running. And then he was he visibly turned to uh, Abuo and said, "What did he say?" I.e., because Pavea was speak I think in French, and and Pavea took a while to get into the the conversation because he was waiting for everybody else to stop talking. Well, a little bit of. I want to say unorganized, uh, a little bit of miscommunication perhaps, and the fact that Venezuela here is going to apply the pressure in the backcourt not going to help, but yeah, they just need a little bit of time to get into this. Solo diabati has got to hurry up, and he did get it over just in time. He has eight seconds to get it across midcourt. Here's Abuo, and this time uh, Venezuela, nobody picks up the penetration. Yeah, and one thing you've noticed for both of these teams, if you're able to get below the free throw line, there's no one really there to contest you at the basket. Just go pad the basket strong and good things will happen. Vargas, his second of the night. What a lift the captain is giving Venezuela. Two three-pointers. Ooh, went for the reach from behind. Venezuela, four of five from beyond the arc here in the opening quarter. It's just exactly the same as against Poland. Can they maintain the accuracy will be the key. Well, what's interesting to me is that Gradwell's coming in, uh, Jordan Zamora's coming in, and Chorio are coming in. And Vargas, who is kind of red hot, comes out. Yeah. Wouldn't you be tempted to let him stay in a minute? Here we go. Solo Diabate. Well, we saw Vargas start the first quarter in that first game, then didn't play the rest of the half. Uh, so he's kind of like that spark plug at the start of the game, I guess, rather than off the bench. Thompson gets it, follows. That time Venezuela did challenge down low, and Heisler again misses from deep. Nobody there to box out Draderall. They really need Zamora to step up here. Took a while to get to the game the other night. Gratterall can shoot it from deep. Hustle, and great hustle. Now Pedro Chorio gets it back for Gien. Another offensive rebound. And once again, that's just pure determination. Shot clock winding down. Cominares makes his move. Another again. one. And Solo Diabate was out of bounds, so Venezuela will maintain possession. Not a good sequence for the for the elephants. Well, so far, Greg Vargas in the game. Meanwhile, for Cote d'Ivoire, excuse me, for uh, Venezuela. Almost eight minutes in, and Cote d'Ivoire has one rebound, Jeff. So that means they're not getting stops, and that's problematic. You can see why they're down nine here in the first quarter. Pedro Chorio steps in, and that's what happens. Eventually, they're going to score if you give away that many uh, second, third, fourth opportunities. Yeah, nice pump fake there by Chorio to get the defender off his feet. The one dribble pull up. Kone turns and scores. Wow. What can you say about Mo Kone that we haven't said already? I mean, he's leading this team, isn't he? He really is. I was reminiscent of another turnaround fadeaway he hit against China in that exact spot. You remember kind of a rainbow shot. This time a little bit more traditional, but still. See the tap on the elbow there. A chance here to convert the three-point play. Now, you have to finish in the top two of the group. Solo Dubati gets... Uh, some words over there, and Pamba checks in for him. You have to finish in the top two of your group to advance to the second round. 
And then once you advance to the second round, you have to finish in the top two of that group as well. So, and the points do carry over. So, obviously, uh, these two teams, they need to win today if they want to stay in it. Kone up to Gietti. Oh! Put it on the highlight reel. Goodness me. He, Eddie, the former Gonzaga man, high flyer here in Beijing. And they need that momentum. I mean, Venezuela, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, eight of nine from the field right now. I'll tell you what, right now, Cote d'Ivoire, that was all Kone and, and Eddie. And that's basically what it's been for this game. Take another look here at the breakaway. Kone with the assist to Eddie for the high flying jam. And you can hear Coach Dudo there in the huddle trying to get his guys back on track. Slow motion for me, Mr. Eddie. He loves it. The general. It's interesting. Uh, it's interesting, though, that with the, the starters out of the game now for Venezuela, let's see if they uh, ease up a little bit. Well, that play certainly didn't look good. Kone has been very active. He's getting a breather now. Frazier's Zerbo has checked into the game. Also, Cote d'Ivoire in a 2-3 zone defensively. Vargas. And Thompson grabs the rebound. Gives the outlet over to Pamba. And little jump hook by Zerbo misses everything. Now quickly, Vargas over to Chorio. And Thompson knocks it out of bounds rather than allow the offensive rebound. Still a good look. Vargas pushing the pace, leading to the shot for Trudio. Couldn't knock it down. And you'll notice here Thompson swiping it out of bounds. Are you surprised by the uh, struggles of Cote d'Ivoire on the boards against Venezuela? Here's Carrera. Oh, good defense. Oh, he was fouled by Zerbo. Should I say good initial defense? And Zerbo, very foul prone we've seen here in these first couple yeah. of games. He needs to just stay on his feet. Again, he's seven feet tall. Two meters thirteen. I mean, he, you know, he he was allowed the contact at first, and, and then when Carrera was about ready to make the move, I'll tell you who's who's pretty tough down low is this man right here, Carrera. He was uh, pretty difficult to contain in that first half the other day against Poland. Yeah, he definitely. I mean, he's six foot five, meter ninety six, but he's listed as a power forward. Yeah, he plays bigger than his uh, than his uh, height. Yeah, I think. Not about the size of the dog in the fight, Jeff. It's about the heart. The bark. It's not now, about the bark. Now it's a 2 2 1 press for Venezuela, which Eddie attacks. Now Zerbo. Ooh. Or is there, I'll tell you what, Zerbo's had a rough introduction to the game, hasn't he? Cote d'Ivoire had the momentum. He's come in, he's uh, put up an air ball, he's committed a foul, and now he's throwing the ball out of bounds. Yeah, that's to just settle down into this game. Team there in the middle of that zone. Venezuela run a sort of motion. Oh, tough pass by Carrera. And we've seen a number of passes just significantly off target. He could have just uh, taken the shot there. He was about a meter away or so. Ten seconds left in the first quarter. Chance for Cote d'Ivoire to end on a high note. Down nine. Well, Pambo almost threw one in from three quarters of the length of the court the other day against China. Here he is. He's got it. He oh, the hook. Yep. And the old mass calls the foul. They give it back to Venezuela. 1.5 seconds remains. So enough time for desperation heave here. 
Unless maybe they have a place at a back screen for Zamora. It's Gratterall can shoot it. He does. And he gets the backboard. So that's how it finishes. Uh, much better for Venezuela. They lead it 26 to 17 over Cote d'Ivoire at the end of one. So check out the stats in that first quarter. Both teams shooting well from the field. Venezuela overall 53%. Cote d'Ivoire 8 of 10 overall. And the four three-pointers, the difference here, the plus nine on the scoreboard thanks to the three made three-pointers for Venezuela. Meanwhile, some of the initial highlights of the opening 10 minutes. Colmenar is getting the early touch. Number of guys putting points on the board for Venezuela so far. Uh, they're led in scoring by Hestela Guillens with eight points, three or five in the field, including, including two threes. Meanwhile, for Good Divois, Leon Thompson apparently has five points. Not sure I remember all five of those. Yeah, I was trying to remember as well. I know he went hard to the basket once and scored with the layup. And here again is that four on one. It was a, a fast break, but just not executed that quickly. Still easy lay in there for Guillen. And if you remember, Cote d'Ivoire limited China to just 29 points in the opening 20 minutes of that game one. Already 26 here. As you see the official app, the FIBA World Cup app, make sure you download that to your smartphones. All the highlights, up to the minute stats, completely free on the App Store and on Google Play for Androids. Any basketball fan has to have that for the rest of the summer as we get ready for the second quarter. Well, Cote d'Ivoire already uh, with a little bit of a, a hill to climb. Some might call it a mountain. Here's Abuo for three. Well, good he, shooter. He needs to be more aggressive. Again, he was one of the leading scorers in the African qualifiers, almost 11 points per game. Only knocked down one shot the other night, but already tonight, eight points for Abuo. This is Vargas, Zamora, Chorio, Graderol, and Carrera on the court right now for Venezuela. And uh, Zamora misses and out. Looked like Pamba was about ready to go. Eddy wisely pulls it back and gives it to Fafana. Speaking of going to the basket, is this man, this is what he has to do. And good job. Got to shoot that. Ball out. And Pamba. Fafana had his hands on the ball. It goes out of bounds to Cote d'Ivoire. Much better. I really think that's where Fofana can uh, help this team if he does go try to get to the rim. Well, I mentioned Abu is one of the leading scorers in the qualifiers. Fofana was the other one. Uh, averaged double figures in those qualifying games, but he was lacking aggression against China. Did knock down that buzzer beater three, though. Ooh. Foul shooting the three-pointer. So three free throws for Cote d'Ivoire. Mistake by Churio. That's got to drive you crazy if you're Toro. Well, just like that, all of a sudden, a chance to make this a one-possession game. And you're fouling. Well, I guess it's the best shooter on the team. That's why the foul is committed. So Venezuela going with the two-point guard backcourt. Guillen and Vargas teaming up. See the spider cam behind Abuo. I mean, obviously, they didn't mean to foul him, but you got to get a hand in the face. And these days, and, you know, where this three-point line is, you know, it's a very makeable three. The coaches See, often say, how often do you actually block a three-pointer? Look, they're coming back. Look at this. Cote d'Ivoire, what a mystery team they are. Sometimes they don't show up. Sometimes 
Yeah, they just need to really improve that interior defense. As you mentioned earlier, Abua missing the third free throw. So just down four now. He's sitting back in that zone. The zone might help that. Definitely. Samora has yet to show us uh, he can knock down the three-pointer at this World Cup. Ian, his backhand, he can certainly shoot it, and that's his range. He's going to have to launch it. He does. It's good. Well, we saw one from the logo near half court. This one wasn't too far off. He just keeps going further and further away. It was a big shot. Now Eddie and Carrera had the ball, had it knocked out of his hands by Fofana. Pamba pulls up, little mid-ranger, gets it back. So now it's Venezuela unable to secure the defensive rebounds. So now four offensive rebounds for Cote d'Ivoire. Yep. They'll settle for that shot, and Abu knocks it in again. Well, he's heating up here, Jeff. Give him double figures already here in the opening half. 12 points, 4-4 four four from the field. And they have him down for two threes. I thought it was his third, but I guess there was a long two in there somewhere. In the, in the middle, Carrera right at that free throw line. There it is. Shot clock about to expire. Again, has to put up another one. Good! From the other side. Well, both of these teams really on fire right now. Well, Gant is having a little uh, personal uh, three on th three point shooting contest with the Buo. It's already six three pointers now for Venezuela. Oh, great defense by Carrera to reach in and take it away. So that was one thing I was uh, a bit concerned with in the first game. As you see there, Guillen launching from three-point land, first on the right, then on the left. But the Ivory Coast shot 28% from the field inside the arc against China. And obviously China has a lot of length, a lot of size on the inside, but you should never shoot less than 30% from two. And part of me was saying, why would you not shoot more threes if you're struggling to shoot inside? And tonight, they've definitely applied that. They're three of five so far, the Ivory Coast. Meanwhile, Venezuela really lighting it up, trying to shoot this uh, Cote d'Ivoire defense out of their zone. Zamora gets it to Colmenares. I think they'll settle for that, Cote d'Ivoire. And... Turnover. Here comes Colmenares again. Vargas. Takes it back out. Good job getting back on defense by Cote d'Ivoire. Good. Oh, good hands and uh, by Bampa, and then a foul by Guillen to stop, effectively stop the fast break. Yeah, the nice in-and-out dribble there by Hamba froze Guillen. Jose Vargas coming back in. Zamora, again, you mentioned his struggles. Unable to knock down the shot so far was just two of eight from the field against Poland. And so far here tonight, 0 of 1. Fofana for three. Nobody under for the board. That's why I like him going to the basketball. Jose Vargas is on the floor right now. Jose Vargas hit those two early threes. Hesler Guillen. He's already shown he can make it. Here he is again. He's Good got defense. it. He's going to launch it right in front of the bench. He's on fire, folks. Hesler Guillen. Look at that. He brings a smile to the face of uh, Dwight Lewis. And that's over a seven-footer with the outstretched arm as well. As yeah, Fafana yeah, yeah. turns it over. And why, oh why, you know, Hesler Guillen is getting his touches. Look at this. Just steps back. It's like a layup for him. That yeah. bat, that, that basket just looks so big, doesn't it? It's definitely a lot of dribbles, so you better hope he makes it. But he had the final right. Final step back. He had the right man on him. Yep, there's Dwight Lewis. A little chuckle. Ten-point lead now for Venezuela. But why is Abuo not getting touches at the other end for Cote d'Ivoire? He's yeah. been just as hot. Great point. 12 points for Abuo, 14 for Guillet. Another good deflection. Campbell almost had that. Uh-oh, Guillet's got it. 
Goes up, and right now he's a scoring machine, folks. He cannot be stopped. Putting on a show here in the first half. Oh, oh nice split. Was indeed. Have the thought. See, wide open. The guys are scared to shoot. Not this man. Thompson back in the game now for Cote d'Ivoire. And maybe an advantage. Abuo. And good job getting the rebound for Fana. Now Bamba. Good. Wow. Seems like everybody's hot. Well, the uh, offensive rebound can often lead to easy opportunities while the defense scrambles. And you saw that there. Nice kick out. And Bamba knocks down the three. While Pamba passes up three a few times, we've seen it already. And once again, shot clock winding down. Well, here it is, Ruiz right at the line. Boy, that is execution to perfection. And the assist that time from Guillet. Yeah, he's uh, already going to have a sky high efficiency today. Just checking that out. He's a plus 18. So Gant, in this tournament. Solo Diabate coming back in. There's that kick out. Bamba with the three, not a man near him. You see Gregory Vargas hands down on the closeout, almost daring him to shoot. Same spot. This time it's Fafana. He misses it. And Ruiz with the rebound. Oh, wide open down to four. Colmenares finally notice it. Here's Lewis for three short. Just grazed the net. Yeah, good Pamba. defense. And we saw uh, Vargas coming. Solo Diabate. Pass to Deion Thompson. Thompson and Diabate have been very quiet here in the first 17 minutes. Guillaume only had five points in the first game and won three. Here's Ruiz. And gets into a good position. And once again, the lead now, 13. And any points from Ruiz are a plus. Really in there for his rebounding. Back-to-back -back field goals for the big man. And another near turnover. Seems like Cote d'Ivoire have actually played better uh, at the score. But right now, they're facing their largest deficit of the game, 13 points. Yeah, it's on the say defensive it's, end. It's the hesler gein factor, but also giving away some of those easy uh, looks in the lane. Misses with the drive. Komenaris and Bamba does a good job of getting the rebound. Dan Thompson has it knocked away, but the ball goes back to Fofana. Solo Diabate hands it off to Thompson, and he's fouled. So a break for Cote d'Ivoire. Good penetration from Solo Diabate, and he hands it off to Deion Thompson. Nice no-look feed there, Diabate to Thompson. See eyes in the rim, threw Ruiz off. And Thompson able to finish through the contact. Chance here to complete a three-point play for the former Tar Heel. Tar Heel. That's right, the Tar Heel brethren. And does not make it, chases it though, and they end up getting a four-point trip down the floor. Bamba, relatively, uh, Impressive today, that young baby. Uh, Not so impressed. Baby. Just says, when's China start, Mom? And his way of content to use a lot of shot clock on well, his possessions. Look who it is. It's Gian again for three. If that had gone in, I just would have gotten up and walked on. But that was better defense from Thompson contesting the shot. Pass to Bamba. That's off to the left. Oh, fell right to Thompson, who missed the putback. 
and he is going to be thinking, what am I doing? Well, he's got to dunk that. Thompson's still a very good athlete. Only 30 years of age. Two-man game, Diabate. Diabate nice. with the left hand, just too hard. Good move, can finish. Now Guilletti's going to come back in. I believe for Diabate. Nicole Duvall missed some opportunities here to get even closer, and it's Guillen. His pass batted over to Jose Vargas. Oh, yeah. oh, he is fouled while attempting the three by Fufana. We heard it right here. Yeah, it's a tough one. Why? Desperation shot. Well, you know why? Uh, because he's, wrist. Been, he's been so good. Yeah. Fufana says, oh my gosh, it's Guillen. I've got to get a hand in the face. You see all the emotions so far this first half. So Guillen has a chance to add to his point total, already sitting on 16 right now. Pamba takes a seat. Guilletti back in the game. So I thought he was going to come in for Diabate. Well, they catch a break. That always surprises me. The guy's making everything he puts up from just outside the gym. And then he gets to the free throw line, and he misses a free throw. That's too easy. Oh, my. 0 for 2 right now. But the good thing, uh, one thing I've noticed about Venezuela, they're a very close team. And through further research, noticed that they have six guys from the Guados uh, club in Guaros Venezuela. Yep. yep, Six players from there, so very close, including the Vargas brothers and Hesler Guillén, as well as Luis Patelmi, Pedro Churio, and their big man, Nestor Corminares. And actually, Duro talked about that, as you see, uh Smiles today as they're leading in the first half. He talked about that in the press conference, didn't he, beforehand, saying that they fortunately have a lot of guys to give them that chemistry. Good defense again here by Trudio. Yeah, chemistry is so vital, especially in a tournament setting. When you lose your first game, you don't want guys to start pointing fingers, fall apart. Well, when half the team plays together throughout the year, that's less likely to happen. Colmenares going hard to the basket. Oh, great follow by Graderall, who's been far more active today. He falls down. Now Solo Diabate has it knocked away. It was Vargas, Gregory Vargas, chasing him from behind. Nice pass. Zamora for three. Hey! And he fouls by Bamba. What a way potentially to get out of a shooting slump. And again, another foul on the three-point shooter. You see the closeout. You can't, you can't, you can't, first of all, you can't take the guy out. But what you see over and over again is the defender landing into the body rather than landing short or to the side. Most of these guys have long wingspans. Just contest and avoid contact. I mean, it's obviously easier said than done, but good looking shot from Samora to help the lead balloon to 15 here. And they're 8 of 19 now from three point range. They were at half, they were at the end of the first quarter, four of 11. So they have been red hot. This is in. All four of their threes have gone in. So the coach trying to simplify things as we take a look at the Guillen threes again. And I think where I think where the credit uh, that's deserved there was the hustle by Gregory Vargas chasing Diabate down the floor. You know, Diabate kind of lost control of the ball, not, you know, goes to a defender, then they bring it back, and they get potential four-point play. And Diabate thought he had a transition opportunity after he broke through the initial pressure. He's got to be a little bit more aware. The guys aren't giving up on the play so easily. And 
Another missed free throw, though. Oh, no, and it turns out to be Kuminaris grabs the offensive rebound. Five-point possession in the final seconds of the second quarter. Frustrating moments here for Cote d'Ivoire. I say, oh, no, that was oh, no for Cote d'Ivoire, but not for Venezuela. And now Vargas fouls Solo Dibate. Yeah, one foul to give. So the next foul will be free throws. Obviously, just five seconds left here. Dibate has it. He launches it short. Well, it's been a tough half for Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, they've had some bright moments, but Venezuela have uh, taken a 49-32 lead to halftime. So as the players head back to the locker room for the break, we'll take a look at some of the stats from this first half. Venezuela putting up 49 points thanks to some phenomenal three-point shooting, 8 of 12 from the field. Cote d'Ivoire, a little bit better offensively than they were the other night, but still nine turnovers proving quite costly. They do have 10 second chance points. Let's help them out just a little bit, but down 17, as Jeff mentioned, a tall mountain to climb, and that mountain's been built by Hessler Guillet. 17 points in that first half, also has three assists. He's really all over the place for Venezuela. They've also got eight points from the captain, Jose Vargas. Meanwhile, for Cote d'Ivoire, they were led by Charles Abuo, 12 points thanks to his two three-pointers. And then Deion Thompson with seven, but not getting much help elsewhere. And we'll see if Coach Puvia can make some adjustments here at the break as we leave you with some highlights of the opening 20 minutes. It's been exciting. The fans have enjoyed it. A lot well, of three-pointers, some dumps. I'm not sure the Cote d'Ivoire fans have enjoyed it. <laughs> They're just happy to be here, Jeff. You know what I mean? No, but um, you just got to play better defense. You know, the zone hasn't necessarily worked thanks to the three-pointers from Venezuela. We've seen good ball movement. The ball's gone inside and out. But also, there's been some desperation threes. And, you know, it's a case of sometimes good defense facing better offense. Yeah, but you got but you got to really – I mean, you talked about it. The points from turnovers – um, and also the failure to uh, grab the rebound off that missed free throw by Zamora, leading to two more points, a five-point trip down the floor for Venezuela. And, uh, hey, listen, Cote d'Ivoire could come back. I, I don't think there's any doubt about it. They can come back. They got to play defense. They got to rebound. And they got to cut down on mistakes. I mean, certainly, do you think Venezuela can keep shooting as well as they have? Uh, I do think so because, I mean, obviously, I don't think Hester Guillen is going to be shooting from, uh, you know, two meters behind the arc every time, but it hasn't been just him knocked down from Vargas. Dwight Lewis has a three-pointer himself. Finally, Drummond Zamora knocked down the three. So definitely positive signs from Venezuela. Also, 10 assists and just five turnovers for them. Meanwhile, nine assists, nine turnovers for Cote d'Ivoire. Well, it's been a tough day for African basketball, for sure. Italy uh, putting a whooping on Angola, 68 to 36, and Nigeria already trailing 22 to 14 against Argentina. So, uh, and uh, I guess uh, Tunisia perhaps uh, flying, uh, what would you say, the continental flag high. They lead 26 to 17 over Iran. So we're at halftime. It's Venezuela on top, 49-32 on Cote d'Ivoire. We'll be right back.
18 in the game for Mbai. Oh, go bad going to the heavens to shut down Germany. Over Lopez, can't get it to go. Smart pulls it down. Mitchell crossing over. Mitchell! They're on their feet here in Shanghai. Inside, Ilya Silva back on the floor now after short rest. Pulls up. Oh! First hand, fourth buzz. Where did he come from with the hammer? As there's Giannis now getting the steal. Goes behind the back. Going all the way through. Up and in and throws it down. Giannis and Teta Kumpo. That really is the trademark move. The power through, just a pure upper body strength. And then that uh, gives a little bit of a flex to the crowd. My parents gave me away, so I had no purpose in this life. Yeah. Oh. When you educate a woman, you educate a nation. It's a quote from Nelson Mandela, by the way. <laughs> Forty-nine, thirty-two, Venezuela on top of Cote d'Ivoire, and a lot of that is owed to the brilliant performance of Hesler again with 19 first half points, four of six from three-point range. He was three or four inside the arc. I thought he kind of lost his way a little bit in that second half against Poland, um, but his uh, credentials, his pedigree is really unquestioned for what he's achieved in his career. He's always had that capability of of going off for big numbers. Well, you always hear athletes, coaches, everyone talking about you take it one day at a time, one game at a time. 
And that goes both ways. You know, when you, you forget the last game. You have a short memory. You move on. You're a professional basketball player, so you don't worry too much about your last performance. You just know that the next time you have what it takes to bring it. And he's, he's a testament to that right now. He's been on absolute fire in this first half. Can he maintain that? Meanwhile, Charles Abuo doing whatever he can for his squad. And, you know, we saw him in the days leading up to the World Cup putting in a lot of work. A lot of skill, individual work, and uh, that's this, it's for these kind of moments that you do that. But my question with Abuo is, it seemed like he had it going, and they decided not to go to him. Yeah, there's a bit of a, I don't want to say a chemistry issue. With, you know, I'm not going to tr throw any kind of fuel into the fire for, for Cote d'Ivoire, but yeah, you definitely need to go what's working for you. Um, you know, a lot of his shots were off passes. And if you're the coach, hopefully at halftime you address that and you, you put something in there to, to get him open, get him some good looks. And the other thing is transition-wise, you know, this team likes to run, but so far only two fast break points. So they're not making it easier for themselves. Um, they have to work for every basket that they've gotten. And, you know, that's been tricky, only putting up 32 points so far in this first half. You know, they shot a little bit better than they did against China. They were 13 for 30 from the field, 43%. So, you know, 40 plus is, is decent, it needs to be better. I mean, right now, if you're Venezuela, you just have to come out and lower the boom, don't you? Yeah, you can put them away in the first. If you, if you don't put them away, this is a team that can come back. So back when I was coaching, I always talk about the first five minutes of the third quarter is the most important time of the game because adjustments, that's what good teams make. And it's either you're up and you get complacent or you're up and you put your foot on the gas and just crush the team's soul. And we'll see if they're able to do that right now. Third quarter action underway here in the Wuka Song. And it's Venezuela in command right now against Cote d'Ivoire. But as we talked about, might they lower the boom or might Cote d'Ivoire battle back? Jose Vargas puts up a very difficult shot. And Cote d'Ivoire uh, perhaps guilty of standing around and not going for the rebound. Nice Coleman pass. Hines and gets it to Hesler again. Another two points for Hesler. Good play by Cominares. And that's that's pretty much it for Ivory for Cote d'Ivoire for me. They give away the offensive rebound in the first possession. After an awful shot, really. Meanwhile, defensively, the magic number for Venezuela is 80. They've uh, only conceded less than 80 twice. Solo Diabate for three. Big shot there for Diabate, but I was saying they've only conceded less than 80 twice in the history of the World Cup. Won both of those two games. Meanwhile, 17 times they've given up more than 80, and they've lost all of those games. Again for three. Got it! I mean, somebody needs to call the fire department. This man's on fire! 20 Goodness me! Four points. So far, I think the Tournament high is what, 30, 34, 36? Oh, he's on the way to surpass that. And this is a guy who had eight assists the other night. He's he's almost single-handedly puncturing the Cote d'Ivoire balloon right now, isn't he? Nine of 12 from the field. That's for Five of seven from three. Solo Diabate back over to Fofana. And Fofana falls down. Offensive foul, called the charge, wow. push off. So Fofana in the starting lineup to start the second half over Mo Kone. Here we have, have we even seen Kone come back out since he had the good start? Yeah, I'm not sure what might be wrong with the veteran. So seeing, uh, Gant with the ball missing the shivers down the spine of all Cote d'Ivoire fans because he's been pretty much unstoppable. Here he goes again. Wow. 
He is just putting on one of the performances of this World Cup so far. And what I love about his performance is that his face hasn't changed. It's like he expects this of himself and very stoic about the fact that he's putting the ball into the basket every single time down the floor, it seems. Guilletti, the long jump shot. And Guillet, or Kominaris with the rebound. He gets it back, avoids the charge, and oh! Ends up getting another offensive rebound with a lot of orange shirts around him. Thompson switches up. Step back. And Guillet this time misses, but foul has been called. So on Cote d'Ivoire. So they will maintain possession. Venezuela plus seven on the re or plus eight, I should say, on the glass right now. I tell you what, the Chinese fans watching this game will probably be a little bit worried right now, knowing that their team also is going to have to face Venezuela, a team that beat China at the last Olympics, if they go on to win this game. It's a 21 point game. Might we see some full court pressure? See the uh, foul called on Abuo. Here comes Kone. He's going to come back into the game. Abuo arguing uh, he felt like a, a push or a hook should have been called. And the general doesn't stop. Brings the energy. Hopefully the players do as well. Pass. Ruiz, beautiful play, and he gives it to Colmenares. Almost felt like clapping for them on that one. Great ball movement between the Venezuelans. Now plus 23 on the board. Oh, beautiful, strong move by Deion Thompson. But, you know, they have, they've had the luxury of playing for Duro with uh, Guaros. And, and again, you talk about chemistry and about making the extra pass as we see Thompson scoring here. Uh, but, you know, none of this is new for Venezuela. I mean, they, these guys know what is expected of them. Well, they played really well together in the World Cup qualifiers. Nine wins and three losses in their 12 games. Um, they were tough at home. Yeah, they've obviously beat a good Canada team as well in, the, in that run as Thompson completes a three-point play. So like you said, they're used to playing together. They're used to winning together. They were also the best offensive rebounding team in the Americas during the qualifiers. So again, they're, when you have a team like that that doesn't give up, you know, goes after loose balls, goes after second chance opportunities, and passes the ball, moves the ball around, has different guys contribute to the scoring column, you know, that's what makes a good team. Coleman Arts goes behind his back there, Ooh. and Guillen throws it out of bounds. It's a 20-point game. As decisive as it's been for Venezuela, I still would not count this Cote d'Ivoire team out. Yeah, we've seen, uh, I don't know if you watched that France-Germany game yesterday. It seemed like France is up 20 a couple of times, and Germany almost pulled out a miracle come from behind victory. Boy, that was an amazing game. I really enjoyed that one. Solo Diabate. Why Lewis has been quiet. They really, haven't needed him. Yeah, really, really haven't. I'm not sure that he's 100% today. He got a little bit of a injury yesterday. Oh, beautiful pass, Lewis to Ruiz. Look at him passing it back outside to Vargas, Jose Vargas. Probably could have stepped in one more step closer to the three-point line on that one. A nice crossover, Diabate. Out to Kone. Needs to take that shot. And no hesitation on the catch. Like you always mentioned, point differential is a factor in these tournaments. So if you're Venezuela, there's just no need to slow down or you know not execute. Oh, nice crossover again. Yeah, look at the pass. Beautiful. And Ruiz had position. And all you can do is applaud, especially if you're a Venez Venezolano, a Venezuelan. That's a smart play there from the veteran Guillen. Understands that. Given the fact he has 26 points, the defense might, you know, 
close out a little bit harder on him now. And he creates for his teammates there. See the crossover. That's actually a really tough pass to make. He took, took all the air oh. off of it. Wow. And just let Ruiz basically catch it out of midair. He, he has been majestic today, hasn't he? Has Gant. It's a great way to put it, Jeff. And the king has just gone to the throne. Get that no, not, man not that throne. <laughs> elevated seat on the bench. Oh, good strong move by Abuo. Well, I, I do maintain this Cote d'Ivoire team can get back into this. They, they don't want to hang their heads. And that's almost an unsportsmanlike. If they were to look at that, was, the way he was grabbing from behind both hands. Pedro Trucciorio, very impressive against Poland. Here's Abuo making the first. And Abuo, the one bright spot right now offensively for La Côte d'Ivoire. Chance for point number 14. Well, there's some new faces here for Ivory Coast. Number seven, Baru Ajehi, getting his first action of the tournament. Yeah, he played He played uh, an important part for Cote d'Ivoire in the qualifiers. Kone and Diabate goes out. A little bit of pressure, they break it easily. Gregory Vargas. Long one from Zamora. Good box out by Pamba. And in fact, he kind of pushed off on Chorio when he saw the rebound was going to be bouncing out. Here's Pamba. Deion Thompson from three. There you go. He's added that element to his game. Yeah, his string to his bow. Definitely didn't have that in his time in Chapel Hill where he did win a national championship in 2009. We just work on the defense. Defense and rebounding. I remember he scored the first basket of the championship game that year against Michigan State. Wayne Ellington, Tyler Hansbro. There's uh, Zamora, and he misses, and now Guietti. And now just a little bit of a window opening here for a comeback for Cote d'Ivoire. Look how strong Abuo has to be with the ball. He turns and scores. That was big time from Charles Abuo. All of a sudden. Back to a 15-point deficit. 16 points for Abuo. He has to remain aggressive the rest of the way. If they can get another stop here and another basket, I, I would be surprised if Duro didn't call a timeout. Agreed. And another chance for Venezuela. Looks like the ball's going in the basket. It stays out. And uh, what Duro's going to do is take Coleman Norris out and bring in his power forward, uh, Michael Carrera. Look at that. Good battle there from Deion Thompson. Gets his fourth rebound and there's one stat I was looking at a little bit earlier on 22 missed shots at, at one point in the third quarter Cote d'Ivoire had only rebounded eight defensive rebounds. Right? So that's not a great conversion or percentage of uh, rebounding opportunities but they're, they're doing a little bit better now. They're up to 12 defensive rebounds. Almost turn it over here. They do turn it over. Ah, oh, boy. And then they get it back. And then and turn then over they lose it. Oh, he went for the kick. And Zamora gets the foul from Guilletti. So a bit sloppy play here in the backcourt. Yeah, that's both the, teams. But this is the type of situation. I mean, Pamba simply cannot make that pass. Good hustle, though, from uh, both Zamora and Habuo. You see there, he reached in with a foot. And Eddie did everything he could to not commit a foul. But, but why is Pamba making an over-the-shoulder pass like that? You're, you're coming back, you got the wind in your sails, and you're just like, here, take the momentum right back. Especially against the press, you gotta know that the defense wants you to make that pass. And the turnovers have been a problem for Cote d'Ivoire today because uh, Venezuela have capitalized on them, as is usually the case. Yeah, 14 to four advantage, Venezuela. Points off turnovers. Yeah. Pamba this time does make the smart pass. And Venezuela picking up their D. 
Yeah, Thompson, considerable advantage size-wise. Passes it back out to Eddie. It's good. The Eddie, the Bulldog, the Zag, and the captain. Well, you know he's never going to stop fighting. It's back to 14 points now. Cote d'Ivoire showing some pride here. They just got to play smart. 2.45 to go in the third quarter. Pass whipped to the corner, and Zamora has uh, worn his shooting shoes today. That's a great find from Gregory Vargas. Cross-court pass. The vision on display. Bamba's going to come back in on the next dead ball for Cote d'Ivoire. Here's Apuo. Ejehi, we haven't seen him go to work. Here's Deion Thompson, same place, same result. And all of a sudden, folks, look out. Here come Le Elephant, the elephants. Get it right back to 14. And now diving on the ball for the, the court is uh, Eddie. But look at Carrera. And then he's fouled by Guilletti, who uh, sticks his feet up. You see here another loose ball. Guys get. On the floor battling. <laughs> Boy, he did flirt with an unsportsmanlike. Yeah, fortunate. Jose Vargas uh, telling his guys, come on, we've built the lead now. Let's let's take it from here. Let's go. But they have not slammed the door shut. Guietti takes a break here at the end of the quarter. Bamba comes back in. Guietti, they need his jumper out there and, and his leadership, but Carrera. Cote d'Ivoire now nine made three-pointers. Venezuela sitting on ten. Well, he doesn't fully capitalize, and Ajayi gets the rebound. Good play by Pamba this time. Now Pamba, he can put it on the deck. Yes, he is, and he's fouled by Zamora. And free throws. And, and really, you have to wonder about that. Unless, unless Bamba's a, a horrible free throw shooter, you're stopping the clock, letting him catch his breath. And uh, here he is at the line. And sure enough, he misses pretty badly on that. Took a view from the spider cam. So that's his first free throw attempt of the tournament. Shot just 31% from the field in the African qualifiers. So not necessarily known for his off offense, more of a defender. So one of two, takes it back to 14. See the one, two, two press here. Chorio from the right, and the three looks golden. So Thompson got caught on the screen, leaving Chorio wide open in the corner. Miscommunication on the baseline defensively. Pamba. Just a little bit of uh, contact there from Chorio. Well, they've a few times gotten it down to 14 points here, but uh, Venezuela have had an answer every time. That last three was huge by Churio. And Pamba's uh, on target with his first free throw. They could Ivoire enjoying their best quarter of basketball offensively so far in the World Cup. First time they put up 20 plus in a quarter. But they've also allowed 20 points so far. So I've now been able to narrow the gap. And Zamora, and look at the hustle from Graderol in Venezuela. Pua for three, and really that last play by Venezuela bodes well for their future here. Hustling down to get the follow. Here it is again, look at this. So Zamora takes the shot, misses, but look who's there. And if he wasn't gonna make it, Gra if he, if uh, Gratawa wasn't gonna make it, Carrera was there. I'm so, not sure where Pamba was going there on the box out. Carrera drives in. 
the battle for the board. Boy, I tell you, Bua is a little more versatile than I realized. He plays big, doesn't he? He's got a little size on him. Three-pointer, and he's fouled. Bamba. So he will go to the line. So once again, calling a three-point shooter. Cadetta can't believe it. We'll take a look here on the hand. That one's tough. That one's tough. I mean, he made contact with the hand, Jeff. It's hard. If you're the referee, you're not going to feel bad about blowing the whistle. He's got, yeah, he's got the reason to call it. That's the thing. He gave him a chance to call it, didn't he? Well, good work from Thompson. And now the worst sight possible for Cote for the Elephant fans as Guillen comes back into the game. Chorio goes out. So you thought Cote d'Ivoire would come into this game with a little bit of hope. Their only victory in the World Cup came against a team from the Americas in, in Puerto Rico in 2010. And besides that one win, 16 losses. And because of that win, it allowed China to go through to the next round. Right. So I remember uh, Bob Dunwald was coaching that China team. He was talking about how the Chinese players were in the room watching and they're jumping all over each other. Celebrating, thanking the uh, the elephants who they had beaten earlier in the tournament. Yeah, Yi Jianlian. Yep, Yi Jianlian. And but here's, uh, of course, Guy Eddy was in that Cote d'Ivoire team. And Pamba picks up the foul. So now Vargas goes to the line. Well, they'd have to gamble a little bit, don't they? Trailing by 15. Probably haven't felt the right person. Nigeria tied at halftime with Argentina. Tunisia up on Iran by nine at halftime. Angola getting blown out by Italy. So in the end, it hasn't turned out, turned out to be a bad day for Africa after all. Mixed results sure. so far anyway. A lot can happen in those uh, second half, obviously. First two points there for Gregory Vargas as well. Wow, that's interesting, isn't it? I think he's accepted, though, his, his role as kind of a secondary playmaker as Guillen established himself as primary point guard. And look who gets the rebound yet again, Carrera. So 10 minutes remaining, uh, better from Cote d'Ivoire, but they still trail 73 to 56. So here are the stats so far. Once again, the three-point shooting has been the key for both sides, honestly. But Venezuela still out-dueling Cote d'Ivoire. Overall, the percentages in favor of Venezuela shooting 50% from the field overall to 45% for the Ivory Coast. Yeah, what I find really interesting, uh, and we've touched on this throughout, is how Venezuela have really capitalized on the 11 turnovers from Cote d'Ivoire, 18 points. I mean, turning it over 11 isn't horrible, but they have they have scored off basically all of those. Yeah, and it's a combination of Cote d'Ivoire not getting back on defense in transition after committing those turnovers. A lot of those turnovers are in, you know, we call it the non-dead ball turnovers, right? The live turnovers. You know, the ball goes out of bounds, you got a chance to get back and set up your defense, but when you're just throwing the ball to the other team and they're coming back the other way, it makes it that much more difficult. And there's there's been those baskets and also off the offensive rebounds, the second chance points and the kickouts really made it tough for the Cote d'Ivoire here. I think what's been most impressive by Venezuela is, is how 48 hours later they have clearly left that defeat to Poland behind them. They came out strong. They knew. Their coach even said, listen, our, our World Cup is not going to be defined by that first game, whether we win or lose. It, it may have felt like the end of the world because they had played pretty well through uh, long phases in that game, uh, but they've come back strong. Yeah, especially because you've been eyeing that particular moment for so long, that first game of the World Cup, you're so excited about it. It doesn't go according to plan, but like you said, they've been able to bounce back, showing a lot of resiliency here tonight. Fofana back in the game now. 
Along with Bamba. Here's Fofana going up against Carrera. Good move. Can't finish. Wow. That is remarkable. It was a very good move. And then he had a layup. And he just shot it over the, over the rim. Look at this. Well, I guess maybe you could say Gratterall did affect him a little bit, but... Yeah, Fofana struggling once again. Oh, fourth in the field. Here he is, getting inside. That's a strong move. And that's where he's at his best. IMO. You know what IMO means? I think it's in your opinion. Well, your, my in opinion. In my opinion. Your, yes. yes. There's quite a few of those. Little acronyms. Yes. Which one do you use the most? I like to speak <laughs> in full language, full vocabulary. Uh, you, oh, don't, you, don't, you don't speak in acronyms? I'm not, a, I'm not an LOL guy. You don't say to your kids, I want you out here ASAP. That's, that's more of a traditional one. Okay, okay. Or As opposed to the modern acronyms that yeah, we see in we'll social media. We'll see if uh, the Ivory Coast RSVPs to the next game, perhaps. Exactly. And show up a little bit more. But uh, well, Fofana, 16 now. the Cholet player, plays in France. Cholet, yeah. Here we go. Vargas. Chile played in the Basketball Champions League, so he's getting some good minutes there. Here's Gratterall. Nice spin. And look at it, Jay. He had his hands on the ball, but... Carrera. Carrera's just a beast on the boards, isn't he? Yeah, it's what he does. You love to have a player like that on your team. Just does all the little things. Oh, and Jay, he ultimately was called for a foul. So, I mean, we talk about it so many times, uh, and it was funny that Mike Taylor, the Poland coach, said, you know, Venezuela have a player called La Bestia. And he was talking about Colmenares, and he said, we have our own Bestia today, and it was uh, Hurt Sandiak, but the Bestia for this team today has been Carrera, but that three there from Graterol, they've all been beasts, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, another nice dish from uh, Hester Guillen for his fifth assist as Zamora knocks down a three. He's now in double figures with 11. Only the second player for Venezuela, more than 10 points, but they've had balanced scoring, obviously led by Guillen as Bam Bam Bam. Not sure you should be celebrating right now, but three point nonetheless, give him 12 points. And this will probably shock you. Carrera only has two rebounds today. Seems like he's got about 10. Yeah, he's active. He's active. That's what counts. Keeps it alive. Here he is with the ball, and he goes hard to the basket, and he charges. And it's the second time he's charged in this tournament. He had one of these against Poland the other day. So Ajay able to get to the spot. Absorbed the contact, was outside the semicircle. So Gregory Vargas is going to go out, replaced by his brother Jose, the captain. And so with Guillen, Zamora, Jose Vargas, and Gratterall, as well as Colmenares, there's uh, plenty of firepower on the court for Venezuela. 16 points to deficit for Cote d'Ivoire. They've got to make their move now. Colmenares going for the steal there. Jay, he hands it off to Abuo. Abuo, great job. Great job of uh, being strong with the ball and being fouled by Jose Vargas. Look at that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Good spot by the referee. Wonder when they called that foul, because there was a lot of holding throughout for both players. Yeah, Abuo, once again, very good ball handler. Like you said, they've gone away from him a little bit here in the second half. Pamba. How about that? Good strong move in the paint, and it's back to a 14-point game. Yeah, his first field goal does have five rebounds, but a strong guard. You want a little bit more of that if you can. Oh, again, just silky smooth. Gets it to Zamora! Those two have connected two or three times now for the driving kick three-pointer. Pamba to a Jehi. 
Well, silky smooth shot. Yeah, he's had that. He did that a lot in the qualifiers. He's very selective with his shot attempts, but can knock down the mid-range. Yeah, he's getting ready to come back in for Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah. Oh. Bounce pass. Ruiz blocked, though, by Ajehi, who's earning some minutes here. Pamba goes behind his back. Gets it to Abuo. Slow dribbling pass, and then nice bounce pass. Thought Abuo might have gone for that. Here's Fofana. And Fofana just a little bit out of control. Nowhere to go. I think they might have passed up one or two opportunities to put the ball up. Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah, Fafana just having one of those tough nights. Has uh, the one point from the free throw line, Look 0 of 4 from the field, and four turnovers. Boy, that was a not in my house swat by Ajehu, who proves yet again he got game. Saw that one coming. Who got game? The world's got game. The world does have game. So is this an end to the timeout? So there's one of those connections from Guillen to Zamora. And then here is the other one. Just a couple possessions later, same spot, same result. I'm glad, I'm glad that we've uh, highlighted him because uh, Zamora clearly did not play his best in that opening game. And it's, it's, good for, it's good to see him come out and play his best today. Yeah, in those 23 minutes, just five points on two of eight shooting. So the bounce back with a 4-7 performance so far here from beyond the arc. You see him handle the ball here at the top of the key. Good defense from Fafana. A oh, great play by Bamba. Well, 15-point game. It's not, it's not over in the, the slightest. And you see here, active hands from multiple guys. It's all you can ask for is defensive effort. Here, Coach Bovia. Well, Zamora takes a seat. Maybe a little bit surprised by that because he's been so good, but they've got both uh, Vargas' back in now with Comenares, Guillent, and uh, Miguel Ruiz. Here he is. Profana. He's going to take on the big man and he's going to turn it over. Number five. Nice lead pass. And look at that. Right off the oh, oh, what a block by Ajehi. And they're going to count it. Well, no argument from Ajehi, but. He almost got there, and Thompson appreciates the hustle. Take another look at it. Ian slowed down. Yep. Ooh, that was close. I don't know. I don't know. We... No, nah, I think maybe it was a bit I harsh. Like, I like to reward the hustle on that one. It's not a clear cut, but hey. Are you in agreement with me that maybe we should have seen Ajehi earlier in this tournament? I mean, well, especially he against terrific. China, yeah, especially against China, they had the bigs. Nice pass. Fafana the kick. Bamba. They needed that one. They did. Could have cut it. Okay. 14. It really is now. Uh, the clock is starting to become the enemy now for Cote d'Ivoire with five and a half minutes remaining. Gregory Vargas. Charged. Great defense. Beat him to the spot. The anticipation defensively there by Gietti. Mark Few would be proud. There he gets up. There have been so many international players to go to Gonzaga. I mean, if we were to talk about every... Yeah, how many teams here have former Zags? It's yeah, incredible. Honestly. Kevin Pangos. 
Be a good set. Yeah. Surprised we don't have a Venezuelan that went there. Thompson going, ooh, going baseline. Rui Hachimura. Here's Bamba. Fofana again goes hard. And again, denied. Well, I felt like he should have been driving more, but just uh, struggling to finish for final. Still playing tough defense, though. They go to the high pick and roll. Oh, that's a very bad pass. And, oh, great D by Jose Vargas to get his hands up to prevent the fast break. Look at that. Look at the hustle from the captain. And he goes in and he lays it up and in. Wow. Pamba has to be frustrated with that one. Jose Vargas, a pest defensively. Boy, we, we are seeing the best of Venezuela right now. The way they have gotten after the elephants. Pamba. Makes amends. But four minutes remaining, and this Venezuela team is going to be tough to, to press. And really, with already a loss, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, they would drop to 0-2 if they don't pull off a miracle comeback here. And great block by Thompson. They, their only chance would be to beat Poland in the hope that Venezuela beat well, they would need China to win. I'm not sure what if they would have a chance if they lose today. Yeah, it does just make things very difficult. Obviously, the calculations and point differentials would have to go in their favor in that potential scenario. There's Solo Diabate. Well, the team that wins the next game definitely is through to the second round because they'll have two wins. So then it would be... So then uh, Cote d'Ivoire would have to get into a three-way tie with the loser of the next game and Venezuela. And I don't think Venezuela, they will play China last. So I don't think that's possible because one of those two teams would go to two and one. So this is going to be it, I think, for Cote d'Ivoire if they don't win. Yeah, Thompson goes up and gets it to go. Well, he's been better offensively, that's for sure, in the second half. Back to 15. Obviously, Thompson played in China once upon a time for the Leoning Flying Leopards. As a teammate of Guo Ailun, I wonder. That's where he plays now. Vargas had that great steal against Pamba and, and drive. Look at that rebound. Look at that. At best, yeah. The beast. Uh -oh. and, and Eddie with the rebound. 245 to go. Ah. Oh, almost think he's got to take that. Oh, what a move! What a move! And he will go to the line. Bamba with his team down 15. I think I think what we need to agree here as you look at the replay from Bamba, the foul. Uh, Maybe we should call the Venezuelans uh, las, las Bestias because they're all beasts the way they yeah, get honestly. after it. They really are. And they play tough basketball. Obviously, if you're China, you don't want to look past your game tonight against Poland, but that's going to be a great matchup as well. Venezuela-China. And if I were to, I would say that China are the exact opposite of Las Bestias. I'm not going to go there with you. <laughs> well, we'll see. They'll have a chance to prove me wrong. Yeah. Yeah, China sitting at 1-0 and so far. Oh, the leak out it makes Jose Vargas. But how about Hester Guillen, 31 points tonight yeah. to go to six assists. Only missing five shots. Oh, good read. And now the pass up to Eddie. This will be a take off. break. And he lays it up over with two hands, and he gets it back now to 12 points. The deficit. 83 to 71. And I'll tell you, you have got to appreciate the fight by Cote d'Ivoire. That was a terrific play. And the pass ahead by Solo Diabate to Eddie. They have not given up. The timeout on the floor for Venezuela. Just listen in to Coach Dudo.
Or maybe it's one of those timeouts where the coach doesn't talk to his players, just gives them a minute to reflect. So you see there the turnover leading to the breakaway for Guy Landrietti. Nice pass from Diabate, but at Duro did not have to say too much. And you can do that when your team's average age is above 30. A lot of veterans, only two players, sorry, three players in their 20s, everyone else 30 and above. You know, that's a lot of grown men who've been in these situations many times. So just close the game out, play smart. I don't think they want to put Venezuela on the line, but if they do, they might want to foul Colmenares, because remember, he really struggles at the line. Vargas has the pass. There's a turnover away. again. Eddie, seeing the best defense for the entire game here, right at the end from Cote d'Ivoire. Look at the razzle-dazzle! And it could not finish. Yeah, Givada wanted his teammates to crash the glass, especially when the bigs go to contest. That leaves rebounding lanes open. Well, credit to that Venezuela defense there to deny the layup to Diabate. The hands were up, they made it a tough shot. Vargas, a lot of dribbling on this possession. Step back, fade away, no good. Look at the, look at that, big, look at that big rebound. Big bro says, I got you. Wow. Let's look at the rebounding totals. Yeah, plus 10 at the moment. Venezuela, desperation, and it's an air ball. Well, we might have to take that MVP award away from him for that. Now, 36 rebounds for Venezuela, 26 for Cote d'Ivoire, and 15 offensive rebounds for Venezuela. So that has been uh, a real problem for Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah, anytime you see 17 defensive rebounds and then 15 offensive rebounds for the other team, that's not a good night. Let's listen in to Coach Bovia. So, Bovia continues to focus on the uh, execution here on offense, calling out the plays that he wants to see down the stretch. Not really the type of coach to get into his teammate, uh, his players, his face, and, you know, not really a screamer. What kind are you, a screamer? <laughs> I'm more of a philosophical coach. Just right. have a Plato, a thoughtful conversation here, just to get, you know, we all want the same result. Good performances, a happy locker room. Minute 11 left here in the fourth quarter. 12 point game, a chance here to get to single digits for Cote d'Ivoire. The clock is the enemy. Fofana, open. Just everything. Is that door still open up? Well, he, there's no doubt. I mean, he's had a tough game today. Yeah, they probably could have used that, Madhu. Just one point. His coach has continued to trust him, though. He's played 22 minutes. Good denial there by Emba. The steal. Gant gets inside, misses, but look at that again. An offensive oh! rebound and put back by Coaster. Elevation. Komenaris has been quiet by his standards. Just eight points, has seven rebounds. Emphatic to final minute. 
So Venezuela are going to get their first win of this FIBA Basketball World Cup. And trust me, folks, these guys are firmly in the hunt for a spot in the second round. They will play China in a couple of days. And no doubt will also uh, would not be surprised if they hung around to watch that next game to see what they're going to be up against. So all smiles, they came out. Business-like approach today. The effort was there. The intensity was there. Um, and I think probably uh, from an experience standpoint that this has helped them because they've played in some big games. A lot of these players, whether it's been for Venezuela or for Guados, and I think that showed today. They were able to put that disappointment behind them and come out and really get after Cote d'Ivoire. Here's Ruiz with a little exclamation mark. That's exactly what that was. And as the buzzer sounds, it's a victory for Venezuela, 87 to 71 over Cote d'Ivoire. Well, there were some good moments for Cote d'Ivoire, but not nearly as many as for Venezuela, who win it 87 71. Their first win of this FIBA Basketball World Cup. Cote d'Ivoire, meanwhile, dropped to 0 and 2. Of course, congratulations to Venezuela picking up that victory thanks to that man right there, Hester Guillent, your TSL player of the game. And Michael Ruiz really uh, putting the exclamation mark on that performance. And again, the three pointers were key, but overall, the field goal percentage 49% for Venezuela, right, the, right below the 50 point bar barrier. Um, Cote d'Ivoire did manage to get a lot of free throw attempts. Weren't able to capitalize. You see that the turnover and assist numbers, but most importantly, the points off turnovers, plus 14 for Venezuela. Really doing a great job there, taking advantage of additional opportunities. Venezuelan fans very happy with that performance. Multiple guys contributing, but it's all about 31 points from Hesse Gideon. Meanwhile, Jordan Zamora, 14 points also helped out. And Miguel Ruiz finishes the game with 10 points and 8 rebounds. On the other end for Cote d'Ivoire, Charles Abuo, 16 points. Kept him in the game for parts of it. They did have multiple guys in double figures. Deion Thompson with 15. Bamba with 13 and Guy Eddie with 11. So four players in double figures for Cote d'Ivoire. I thought their effort was better today. And uh, I just, I, you know, for large parts of the game, they just could not compete on the boards with Venezuela. A anytime they tried to make a comeback, that was kind of snuffed out by w whether it was an offensive rebound, a second shot, uh, or a great you know, look in the corner from Zamora or Guillen made a three. Well, like you said, I mean, it's all about that first half, right? They had a 49-32 lead going into the break. Second half was pretty even. Both teams scored 24 points in the third quarter. Cote d'Ivoire actually plus one in the fourth, but they just couldn't really cut into that large halftime deficit. Well, we, uh, I mean, just for so many players, you see the box out there, for example, you know, whether it was Ruiz, whether it was Colmenares, whether it was Carrera, I mean, they are they are tenacious, you know, and, and this is where I think China are going to struggle against Venezuela because Venezuela are going to know uh, that they can come out and get to the second round if they beat China. That's what it's yep. going to boil down to um, unless they finish with three teams that are with two wins and then it comes down to points differential right um, so China desperately uh, need to get a win tonight Agreed. against Poland and if they don't and you have one two one one teams for winner take all uh, that could be a problem that yeah. will be a problem and that's why this tournament is so incredible because every game means so much uh, you really can't look too far ahead. You can't think about the second round. You can't think about the quarterfinal. you got to play the next game because guys are coming for those spots. And uh, again, we, we, we talked about this, but all credit to Venezuela. 
um, and probably for Cote d'Ivoire as well. I mean, I th they, they put their disappointments behind them. They came out. They played hard today. But Ven Venezuela, I think that their experience really came to the fore today. And, uh, you know, these guys, again, you know, many of them played at the Olympics in 2016. They played at the America Cup. Um, they were in the 2015 team that won the America Cup title uh, when, when uh, Nestor Che Garcia was the coach. And uh, I think that experience showed today. So we'll get a look here at the standings updated. Venezuela at 1-1. One one. Now up top because of the extra participation point, followed by China and Poland, who are both 1-0. and They'll play tonight. And Cote d'Ivoire have two points as well for two participation points down in fourth place. You see the China game will start at 8 p.m. local time which is in about two hours and 15 minutes. So you've got time to uh, make a pizza or whatever and uh, get ready for the game. So for Josh Davis, I'm Jeff Taylor signing off here from the Wukasong Arena. Venezuela win it 87-71 over Cote d'Ivoire.